Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel, guys. You've got Bert, the Herd and Lanny, the DD, your favorite dividend investing channel here on YouTube, rocking the Vanguard hat, guys. Today, we're going to go into three stocks that I'm questioning if I should sell and move on. This will be a fun one, everybody. But before we talk about it, subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. We're going to continue bringing uh, dividend investing news, stock analyses, and even just our own internal portfolio reviews and a lot of the discussions that we have behind the scenes. So make sure you follow us so you don't miss any updates on what we're doing with some moving and shaking in our portfolios. And today's video is going to be a lot of fun because this is a big potential move for Lanny with evaluating these three stocks. Um, Lanny, what kind of brought you thinking through this and like what brought you to the stage of where you're looking at these companies? Yeah, and this is let's let's have a conversation. Bert and I are talking, community, we're talking here too. Want your feedback throughout the video as well. Um, because I haven't made a decision yet. So really we're doing this almost almost live. Again, this is going to be released Sunday, April 30th, but we're filming it on April 29th. Um, you know, we're all trying to we're all trying to reach financial freedom for the most part here on this channel. Bert and I definitely are by way of again, dividend investing right here, guys. And, you know, you have, how do you increase your dividend income or your forward passive income stream? You either can earn money, save it, and buy, you know, investments, such as dividend growth stocks, like what we do here on this channel. So you have to have more fresh capital to put out there. As we just talked on Saturday's video, dividend growth, right? I mean, that was just released by five highest growth stocks by way of dividend increases from the last 12 months we just talked about on yesterday's video. Definitely check that out if you haven't already. So your income increases that way. But then it's also evaluating your stock portfolio to ask yourself with certain stock positions you own, is there a better way to optimize the amount of investment I have in XYZ stock? Are they yielding enough? Are they growing it enough? Or maybe they yield zero, but you've just held on. Yeah. And remember, we're typically buy and hold investors. We don't want to sell stocks. We don't want to make moves from within our portfolio. That said, though, our portfolios are not stagnant. These companies are not stagnant. Things happen over time with companies where you buy a company five years ago with the best dividend growth projections, best dividend growth history. Sometimes things change. Sometimes uh, the, the main customer gets cut out. The price of oil fluctuates and causes him wildly. Sometimes in one, the case of one of these, they get acquired. The merger doesn't work out the way that everyone thought it did. And then things change. So you can't just treat your portfolio as if it's truly buy and hold without reviewing stocks ever going forward. You have to keep monitoring and maintaining to make sure you're up to date and you know what's going on. And that's what's really, I think, the core of this and bringing it here. We're looking back on some investments Lanny made. Are these companies helping Lanny get closer to financial freedom? And that's what we're going to go through today. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's again, this is not an easy decision here. That's why I'm also asking you guys to also provide your feedback where it's going to provide his. I'm going to provide my standpoint. So we're going to talk about three stocks, three stocks that are pretty much $1,000 or more in my investment portfolio, three stocks that I've had for more than a year, some more than five years. And as Bert knows, some maybe even more than 10 years in this stock portfolio that I've had um, that I've been investing into for the last 13, 14 years. Um, again, it's always about achieving your goals and making sure you're putting the best time resources, in, which includes money, to mm -hmm. achieve those goals. I mean, Bert, do you want to see we get into the first yeah. stock here? I think let's do it. Let's talk about this one because it's one that we both own. Um, so I'm going to be very interested in the community too. I'm going to be very close to watching what's happening to get everybody's feedback on this one. This company is First Energy, ticker symbol FE, headquartered in the great city of Akron, the AK Rowdy. What is it, Lanny? Is it a... That's it. Hey, it's the A, baby. The AK Rowdy. First Energy, what's been interesting about them is they were one of the largest players in energy in the Ohio, PA, West Virginia market. They had a lot of things, but they've been running into a lot of issues the last five, six years. They cut their dividend at one point. The dividend has continued to remain stagnant. I actually can't remember, so correct me if I'm wrong, Lanny, if they've increased the dividend, but um, I know- you know, um, so, Yeah, they're, they, they've they increased the dividend. They, they cut it 
you know, yes. and, and unfortunately, Bert, you and I both remember the conversations. I'm yes. like, the dividend's gone. Yeah. Uh, because they did cut it back in 2014 from 55 cents to 36 cents. And then they held it at 36 cents for about five years almost until 2018. They increased it to 38. 2019, they increased it to 39. Now it's been four years since 2019. Um, and they haven't increased that dividend in four years. And part of the issue is they're just running into issues. I mean, we're here in Ohio, so we in Northeast Ohio, so we catch a lot more of what's going on with First Energy. There's a massive bribery scandal that First Energy was at the heart of with, with the state of Ohio and a bunch of elected officials that it wasn't a cheap scandal and it still continues to go on. They're dealing with some fallout from um, some investments and a lot of debt to invest in into some of their nuclear energy subsidiaries. A lot of stuff's going on, a lot of noise. The Browns just pulled their stadium sponsorship with First Energy. It's no longer First Energy Stadium for the Browns. It's just Cleveland Browns Stadium. And not necessarily the best sign going forward. So a lot of headwinds are facing First Energy um, now. So it's the perfect time to reevaluate if it's even perfect for our portfolio anymore. Yeah. And guys, this is a stock that we didn't just buy last week. I know Bert has owned it for a long time. But how many rough estimate years do you think? You I, I mean, it was before the dividend cut. So you said the cut was in 2014, did you say? 2014, 2015. So I bought it yeah. 2013, maybe 2014. I don't know the exact, but I've owned it forever. It's yeah, in my room know. too. What about you? I've owned it for at least 10 years. I'll say, yeah. I'll, I I'll, I can safely say it's been at least 10 yeah. years since I've owned First Energy. So you've owned it for 10 years, Lanny. Um, why don't you give some quick stats about the size of the position, how much income it produces yeah. and is it in a gain or loss position? Yeah, I mean, guys, you know, um, I, I own about $5,500 worth of First Energy. So it's not small. This is actually going to be the one of the biggest of the three. I own $5,500 dollars roughly i think it's a little bit less than that but let's just use round numbers for the sake of the video um actually it's well and for those that really want the details five thousand three hundred eighty three dollars um and they produce two hundred eleven dollars in forward income so the yield right now is three point nine two percent um so again they produce two hundred eleven dollars over fifty dollars a quarter for me i get from first energy um, and i've owned it again for 10 years and the unrealized, I'm actually in an unrealized gain spot on that, not by much, $249. So I haven't really been a great mover or shaker for me. And again, when you couple that with four years of no dividend growth yeah. on top. Of it. Yeah. So what's interesting, um, just hearing that you're in a $249 gain position. You've owned it for 10 years. Yeah. Imagine if you didn't, so imagine if you didn't trip the dividends, if you didn't check that. Imagine all of that, you would be in a loss position for that. So that's one of the interesting side things of um, dividend investing um, from that standpoint. But, okay, so it's in a gain. It's in a taxable account for you, right? I can't remember if you said it or not. So taxable account. Tax. Tax. So if, yeah. if you sell this, you're going to have a long-term capital gain to realize here. Um, just to, for me, I'm not the future. I own 3700 in a Roth. Um, it's about $145 of income annually. And I also have a gain of six hundred eighty-six dollars, but it's not taxable for me since it's a dollar in a Roth. So it's a slightly different type of trip. It would be a different type of transaction for me than it would for you, Larry. Yeah, that's fair to say. Yeah. So guys, so, that's that's first energy. Yeah. You know, again, no dividend growth for four years. Yeah. Payout ratio on expected earnings. Expected earnings is sixty-two percent. Again, current yields at three point nine two percent right now. Yeah. So modest growth. Um, not modest growth. Modest payout ratio. Um, plenty of room to maintain the dividend at its current level. Still not expecting much growth. How could you after four years? So, so, so let us know, everybody, what you think about First Energy. Um, and hypothetically, too, if Lanny were to sell, what other type of energy positions would you suggest um, from within? I'd be curious what your thoughts are and what your favorite electric uh, utility type company is in there. So why don't you tell us about number two, Lanny? Yeah, uh, again, I appreciate you guys' feedback on First Energy Stock. And recommendations to move it in. I do own National Grid, NGG. So I'm curious if you think I should sell First Energy and move more into NGG to collapse one utility and move into another one. There's that kind, I of, about. kind of too, right? Um, in my wife's account, yep. Yeah. Oh, that's your wife's account. So it's not that it'd be a new position here. So, okay, NGG it is. Let us know. First Energy for NGG. Let us know your thoughts, everybody. All right, yep. number two. Let's talk number two. Yep. So this is a company I bought, I think, during the pandemic. Um, so I haven't owned it that much, maybe a couple of years. Um, let me get you an exact date here on that. Um, MDU Resources Group. 
Um, mm. I've owned them since, yeah, November of 2020. So, you know, kind of, you know, a little bit into the pandemic, obviously. Bought them in November of 2020. They were a consistent dividend grower because they are, because they've been growing dividends for over nine years. Don't own that much. Own a little over $1,000, rounded up to 1100 They produce about $33 in forward income for me, MDU Resources nice. Group. Big company. I like what they do. You know, very diversified from being this, um, you know, again, they're not just in the utility space, natural gas space, electricity space, but they do a lot of pipeline work. They provide construction materials and work um, for pipelines and other construction services um, related to the industry, which, again, I think it's pretty unique what they do. Now, the issue I have with them is their dividend growth. They're one of those modest yields. 3.05% 3.05% of the time of this video, but they only grow their dividend typically between two and a half or we'll call it two to 3%. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So it, that is interesting because that's not typically what you like to see. We always aim for like a combination of a dividend yield plus their dividend growth rate closer to the 10% mark. I'd say right now, what, eight to 10% is what we shoot for. And that's about right. Um, Right, they're not meeting that 3.05% yield with a five year dividend growth rate of 2.44%. So, yeah, if they're having this low of a growth rate, you would have liked to see a slightly higher yield to compensate for that lower dividend growth. Um, interestingly, yeah, I it's interesting because when you run through the, the other metrics quickly, P ratio is 13.91, their payout ratio is perfect at 42%. So, it's interesting, they do have room to grow the dividend more if they wanted to. This isn't like they're sitting at an 80% payout ratio and there's just no room. They're just not doing it. They're using the funds to reinvest elsewhere in the business, which is interesting. I see why you're contemplating this one, Lanny. Oh. You know, again, yeah, I'm in an unrealized gain spot. Again, not a big investment. So when you actually think about it, I'm in a $130 overall unrealized gain spot on MDU. My yield on cost is actually you know closer to 4%. Because at the time, I was like, oh, closer to 4% yield with a 3% growth during the pandemic. Very, pretty safe what they do. I was like, oh, I felt very comfortable. But then... Mm-hmm. I think I was just reaching for a company versus just kind of sticking to like a VYM strategy that yielded the same, but probably has double to triple the growth rate. Sure. So with this one, Lanny, I don't own this one, so I don't really have anything to add from my standpoint, um, like the other one and the next one we're going to talk about. Do you have, so you, for first energy, you had national grid that you're like, I could go first energy to national grid. Is there something where you would say MDU to blank or would you just say like MDU to VYM? Just route it there like you were saying. Yeah, I'm, guys, what do you guys think? First off, in the comments, I am debating, yeah, do I sell MDU, take almost $1,100 and buy essentially 10 shares, at least of BYM, just shift it there to get better growth and a slightly better yield as well. Again, not really about the yield, but better growth rate. So putting my dollars, removing another position, again, this is removing a position and not adding to a brand new spot, adding something that's already in the portfolio. Let me know in the comments on that one. Yeah, I think it'll be fascinating to see. I mean, I think that would be a great move. I think it'd be a great alternative for this. Um, you're not giving up anything. So let's see number three, though, because number three is the dog in our portfolios that we just time to think about more. That company, Warner Brothers Discovery, ticker symbol WBD, the ugly redheaded stepchild that came of our eight former eight, not we still own it, but the AT&T that we used to own acquired Warner Media, and then we all know the story. They cut their dividend. They got too much debt. New management came in, spun off the streaming, Warner Media. They merged with Discovery. And now we have this shares of this WBD that pays us no dividends and is just sitting there in our portfolios. Again, all long-term right here. Yeah. And this is also in a significant unrealized, and I use the word significant because a lot of that cost basis came from owning AT&T stock. Um, definitely look at your... Um, unrealized gain loss tables with your brokerage as well to take a look at it on WBD. Let me know in the comments already right now. Bert and I want to know, did you keep, hold, or you know, essentially buy more or sell WBD stock when you got it from AT&T? Yeah. Um, you know, I'm sitting on a $1,300 unrealized loss. Yeah. I mean, it's, but that's I'm sitting, yeah, I'm sitting on a $835 myself. So these are large, but you could use the taxes. I mean, you've also talked about as we're going through this first energy, $249 gain for you, MDU, $130 gain. 
the loss is larger. You'd be able to use the losses from um, from this to offset the gains there to to cancel out the taxable impact of the transaction too. Yeah. Again, WBD trading at thirteen dollars and sixty cents right now. I know that's a far cry from where they first started. I think between that eighteen and twenty dollars spot. Um, you know, it takes a lot of debt and a lot of capital to really figure out their streaming package with, with HBO, which I know I think it's just going to be called Max or something like that coming out here yeah. soon. The right Max, first. yeah. The old Saved by the Bell restaurant, I think, was called the Max, right? Oh so, yeah, God. yeah, I, they don't really know what to do with it. Like, it, it kind of seems like it's slightly directionless right now. It's like nobody knows what to do with these streaming companies. Here's a huge company, but how much how much dividend income do you get from WBD? Not one, not two, not three, zero dollars from them. So they don't pay a dividend. So anything you would move this into would immediately be accretive to your dividend income. Yeah. Again, this is going to be a similar type as MDU, whereas so I just push it right into BYM. So that's about nine hundred. So I'm in a thirteen hundred dollars unrealized loss. Right now, the proceeds, if I sold WBD, would be about $900. And coupling that with MDU, that's about $2,000. So I would get close to, you know, between nine, eight, you know, 18 to 20 total shares with VYM. So it would go right to VYM, which yields around 3.1% and has around a 6 to 7% overall dividend growth rate. Yeah. So everybody, again, Lanny's got these three positions here. First Energy, 50, about 5,500. MDU, about 1,100. Warner Media. Discovery, whatever the new company's name is, and $900. Generally, you just let us know in the comment section what are to do with this. If you, do you put them all into VYM? Do you take First Energy and move it into National Grid and then take the other two and put them in VYM? Or do you have a different take on these companies? Would you just roll the dice and see if they're going to come back and turn into it? That is an option here. And from the go to this, Lanny, again, just to reiterate, have you made up your mind yet with what you're going to do? I've not made up my mind. Again, I'm sitting here going, how do I get and take steps closer that better aligns the goal to financial freedom by way of building passive income? And you know, this is 7,500 total dollars that I can use and work with to either improve yield and improve growth at the same time. Because you know, it's all about being able to not just protect your income now, but grow your income in the future. We're excited to see what you say. So everyone, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up. Lanny, what else do we have to tell the viewers before they get out of here? You guys are either with us or you're against us. That was Bert and Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats. Over and out.